Hey folks, everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yes, kiss and meet him begin. Okay, good. Well, let's see. Big, big turnout this week. Uh, what's going on? We've got the New Year's Experience Viewer is promoted. Um, so that has the guidebook and some some uh, usability stuff um, probably time. nothing big from the kind of content creator standpoint um, and we've got the usual things in line behind that that are getting merged um, I don't know what the next promotion is going to be but I wouldn't be surprised if it was the, the next mate viewer um, it's got quite a few bug fixes in it uh, Tommy, do you want to talk about what's going on in graphics land these days? Yeah, sure. Uh, so let me wonder if 6 is still in development. Uh, it's coming along. Uh, we've also started working on tracing integration, so we're pretty excited about that. So that's progressing as well. Uh, Eclipse has been out this week, so I'm holding on the fort, so to speak. Uh, other than that, not much to report. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's see. What else? We've had a little bit of discussion recently about Linux. Um, you know, as you know, we haven't really supported a Linux viewer in quite a while. Um, there's no guarantee that we will in the future either, but there's been a little bit of discussion about it. Um, how, how interested are any of you guys in Linux viewers, and do you have any experience... Uh, working with them. Just curious. Yeah, I know it's not a uh, it's not a, a primary TPV meeting, although we do get a certain amount of overlap in who comes. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just curious among the people who are here, I suspect we've got a pretty high fraction of uh, Windows folks in this neck of the woods. Just curious. Uh, let's see. There's a question about. Oh, thanks. Cheers, you're good. I don't really know any creators that we use Linux anyway, but I suppose I'm interested to see. Uh, there's a question about mesh editing tools. I haven't heard anything about mesh editing tools, um, so I don't know uh, what uh, you're referring to with patch. I didn't really see Linux as a real gaming thing. Uh, I don't know, maybe so. I'll, I'll uh, chat with the next time I get a chance.
poor and honest. I'm sorry, hating on you gimps. Uh, points don't lose on arc performance. Uh, performance floater work is continuing. It, it, the last version of it I saw was pretty nice. Um, uh, as as you know, we're initially uh, the current implementation is just using our existing arc, so the the numbers aren't very really meaningful. But we're just trying to get the UI itself uh, behaving in a reasonable way. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, I'm hoping to get some time to look at ARC stuff uh, in the uh, coming weeks, but uh, there's not anything else going on right now besides the performance loader. Not making the numbers meaningful? Yeah, that would be nice. I think they're not very useful now in that sense. Um, latest viewer had voice updates, but the voice version doesn't seem to have increased. Um, well, the, the updates we had, the fixes we had for voice recently weren't uh, weren't with changing the version of, of voice itself. We had um, we changed some settings for uh, you know, how we're using the, the existing Vivox DLL, but I mean it's the same underlying uh, uh, underlying voice code. Is that the question? Yeah, the change we made was to, to uh, the way we were or weren't using the automatic uh, voice level uh, detector. There's There was some code that was trying to sort of automatically tweak the voice sensitivity based on uh, based on your, your personal uh, voice behavior and it seems to be very uh, sensitive to different people's cadences, so some people have more dropouts than others. Um, and the current implementation of the viewer, by default, doesn't use it at all. It just says, you know, if you've got voice, if you've got voice turned on, then it's going to send voice, and there's no attempt to figure out when to cut people off automatically. And so far, that seems to be working in the sense that nobody's complaining about it. Um, but yeah, let us know if uh, you have any strange behavior with it or whatever. The bass from his voice makes me so sleepy. Remember, if y'all got questions, feel free to ask. I'll ask them for you. Oh yeah, we've got open dev uh, every other week. You know it fits the catfish on the bank. Uh, Lucy, I don't. Th I think we're looking at the 360 videos right now. Mostly we're talking about uh, being able to make a uh, you know 360 snapshot. So it's basically a, a still image that that wraps Dang. around. Jeez, we haven't really it. talked about uh, we haven't really talked about videos at this point. It would. <laughs> well, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if there's a lot of interest in the snapshots and people are excited about it, then that's, uh, you know, something we would potentially discuss. Uh, but just getting it working with still images requires some work. But the way it works right now with, with our snapshot code is 
it takes a fair amount of time to collect high-res images in multiple directions and then combine those all into one uh, you know, 360 degree still. So trying to actually capture 360 video in real time would probably require a pretty different approach, right? You'd probably have to be trying to do it in a single shader and like capture the whole panorama every frame. Um, so I think that would be a pretty big, pretty big change. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, we'll uh, potentially chat about it when the time comes. Question about VR support. No, we don't currently support VR. We did do some work on a VR viewer at one point. Um, the biggest problem was we just couldn't uh, we couldn't get reliable enough updates, right? To, to have a good experience in VR, you really need to have uh, a steady high frame rate, like 60 FPS or something. Um, and uh, we weren't able to do that, so it you know it makes for pretty disturbing viewing if uh, if the uh, uh, if your your eyes are updating very slowly and, and uh, you know things are very jittery tends to tends to have a bad effect on people. Um, so uh, I think to really make a VR based viewer work, we would have to be able to have um, stricter guarantees on uh, frame rate, which would probably mean constraints on you know hardware and possibly constraints on uh, content complexity in some way to, um, you know, some way to guarantee that there's a limit to how much stuff we're trying to draw each frame. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, long way of saying it, we'd love to have VR support, but it wouldn't be super easy to plug in right now, and it's not, it's not coming soon or anything like that. Yeah, well, that could be an interesting approach if you're uh, sort of tweaking the images after the fact. Control your avatar and pick up stuff with VR controllers. Um, I don't know, maybe. Would would people care about that when we didn't have VR support for the for the viewer? I'd assume that the kind of 3D goggle experience would be the the biggest driver. I mean, if we, you know, if we decide to work on VR, we would look at input devices too. But, uh, you know, since right now the right now the graphics pipeline is really the biggest limitation, so there's not a there's not a sort of path up. there.
I saw uh, Bunny. I saw you had a question about mobile viewer. Um, possibly at some point. The the thing we're working on right now is a mobile app that's more of a. Um, uh, it, it's more of kind of a, a communicator app for for uh, uh, supporting you know chat and notifications that kind of thing. Um, having a, a real mobile viewer that lets you kind of render stuff in, in 3D and, and interact with the world that way would be uh, would be a much bigger deal. Um, and it's not something we're working on currently, although it, it does come up in discussions fairly often. Um, it's, it's certainly possible we would do something in that direction uh, at some point. Uh, question about uh, you know updating our engine versus getting uh, versus sort of moving over to uh, an external engine like Unreal or or you know Unity or something like that. Um, it 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 comes up uh, you know a certain amount. It's um, I think one one interesting challenge for us would be that we have so much. Uh, you know, existing content that people have, uh, you know, very strong feelings that they should continue to look the same. Um, moving to, uh, uh, you know, even a new API, but especially a whole new engine, uh, is, is likely to, to make, uh, you know, visual compatibility uh, an interesting concern. <laughs> SL2 with a new engine. I'm pretty sure we're not going to start a whole new project to make a new second life, but uh, if if we are, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not working on it right now. It's probably so, a better option to try and improve, improve and uh, optimize what we already have, because when you think about it, um, like say we switch, like they magically were able to switch over to something like our own thing real that would not only cause a lot of lag options for older computers but you think we're already having trouble um with our texture merit memory pulling all of, like all of the textures that we do which are three and um like your your your, uh, your normals your diffuse and your um, specular but like uh um, something like on real that number will double and so you got to think you'll be pulling you'll be downloading all of those textures as well so we'll, that alone probably um, would mix any kind of update to something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good point. Tell me any, any thoughts from the kind of graphic side about yeah. how uh, feasible so it would be? I play a lot of Arc, a lot of Conan Exiles, and Unreal Engine definitely runs nice and fast, but as Joe said, it's, Unreal is really 
designed for static content. Uh, and unfortunately, that just doesn't really fit the paradigm here. We, we just have so much dynamic content. Now, you could make the case, it's like, well, most regions are not changing all that often. So there's definitely some optimizations to probably do. But just the sheer amount of work that would have to be done, it would set us back by probably one to two years at least. So that kind of leaves like, what do you do in the meantime? And specifically, we have a lot of older hardware. And it's always a struggle to figure out where to cut off sort of the, the min specs at. Uh, I mean, Windows 10 kind of makes that easier. It's like your machine doesn't support Windows 10, we don't support you. So we'll see what Windows 11 brings. And uh, I think we're, we, we've actually talked a little bit of that last year. And taking baby steps is, makes a lot more sense for us. And so uh, the biggest problem with performance right now is just the number of draw calls. Uh, at which we have an excessive number of those, and OpenGL really does not like that. We're more modern AP, graphic APIs like Direct3D and Vulkan and Metal don't really care about how many draw calls you all do. You just dump just a ton of vertices and geometry and textures, and it just goes, does it. So, the more intermediate step would be to kind of replace the OpenGL aspect with some sort of rendering library itself, and that would definitely be the, the biggest win for performance. Set. You'd see along. I mean, we know where some of the bottlenecks are. Rendering you know. library is a good idea. Though. Yeah, so there, there's there's libraries that do that. So we've been investigating that. Uh, it's too, still too early to say anything uh, about Great that. Idea, we've, been, actually. we've been looking at that just to make some make the rendering a little more uh, render agnostic or API agnostic. And so potentially, if we wanted to do like a direct 3D, we could actually do that. So that's uh, unfortunately that means getting some more work to kind of rip out all the hard-coded OpenGL stuff which is scattered <laughs> everywhere across the viewer because that was written with that assumption so uh, yeah we definitely have our work cut out for ourselves uh, avatar rendering definitely is the biggest bottleneck by far and water reflection and shadows definitely show up in our profiles but as this, and this, and this is the reason why we're doing trace integrations we actually want to get more fine grain uh, statistics to see exactly where is our time being going per frame it's like oh specifically in this function right here this is being a hog and, uh, also, multi-core, something not really taking advantage of. We're definitely heavily single-threaded, so kind of just thinking about how to take the existing engine, make it more multi-threaded aware. I'm sure, is definitely one of the challenges that we have as well. So, so yeah, no, Unreal definitely is an interesting option, but I think it's just not really feasible from for a technical point of view with the sheer number of content and shaders and and, uh, and the business sense. Um. Yeah, that's an excellent way of, way of putting it. And uh, to answer um, a question that was just asked, um, I don't think that sim borders really have anything to do with the actual graphics engine itself. I think that's um, uh, a server thing, right? If I understand that correctly. Like. Uh, sorry, say it again. What, what's a server thing? Two of every furry. The, the sim border issue. Yes, the sim border, the sim border issue. The way you, the way that there's a delay when you're crossing sim borders. I assume that's what they're talking about. Um, and I thought that the issue there was mainly because you're crossing over from one server to another. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I it's think it's both. Be able to fix that. Yeah. Well, historically, we we've had a lot of performance issues with with border crossings. Uh, just because of all the, the work that has to happen on the back end to sort of pass all this data from one region to another and sometimes from one sim from one uh, host to another, depending on whether you're moving to a region that's on a different host. Um, so that that can it's add a, a big hiccup and a lot of overhead. I, we, we have done some optimizations for that in, in the last year or so that should help. Um, but... Uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's there's graphics aspects too because, uh, you know, in terms of just be, like, being able to kind of see across region boundaries and stuff has to get kind of passed back and forth and, and uh, um, in the in the rendering engine. If I if I may comment, a progressive world idea would require all of SL to be on the same server, and that's not possible. Is it not? Am I not, not correct there? People are uh, meeting when they say progress the world. I think, um, I thought the issue was the actual lag that comes from crossing the sim border. Uh, maybe I'm not understanding.
I know, right? Aren't they? They're just as beautiful as their hair. Like, you can tell that this person makes that hair because they're just so damn gorgeous. I know I'm trying to focus on me, but hold on. Let's look at Raven Bell. So pretty. That's the kind of avatar I want. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, our, our support for, uh, you know, multiple levels of detail at this point is, is fairly limited. Our, our texture representation is sort of has built in uh, uh, kind of MIPS to it. You've got different, uh, you've got different uh, levels of, of uh, coarseness all sort of built so, into the same texture. You know but, like uh, for geometry, it's, it's obviously it's all over the map. Um, you know, we only have a, f a fixed number of possible like LEDs, and, and uh, be what a they lot felt of like with doesn't Utena. have, like, oh, doesn't have good ones Oscar! Or time, so, Lady Oscar! Um, you know, being That's able what to I'm getting. Sort of completely progressive uh, display would be a, a big change from where we are now. I'm sorry, that was a response to that. Not sure what that's in reference to. Is there a jeer? Okay, uh, yeah, but if you have any details on which particular issue they're interested in, I'm happy to pass it along, but I'm not sure offhand. Oh, Lucy, thanks. I'll take a look. Um, so this is the response, I guess. Hey, Winda. Uh, okay, it looks like the point point light thing is something that's been brought in. There's a there's a live active issue for it, but it's not currently being worked on. It's not one of the ones that got pulled into LMR six. So uh, I guess I don't really have a time frame for that. But it's still it's still on the radar. Yeah, better better LODs would would help. We're we're getting uh, we're just getting into the process of starting to look at mesh optimizer to see how well that would work for us. Um, I know some folks at this meeting have recommended that in the past, so we'll uh, see if that maybe will help. People who really don't want to make LODs will find a way to force the viewer to just not display LODs and then we'll tell everybody to use those settings. Um, so 
I'm sympathetic to education and I'm sympathetic to uh, improving practices, but it's uh, I think it's inherently an uphill battle. Education is only so effective. But it is effective. We're getting a swarm of new creators and especially coming in from IMVU that don't know anything about the limits of Second Life and are importing tons of triangles because, you know, it makes it smoother and high quality. But we need to have some base to tell them that, hey, no, that's not the way we do things around these parts. Some education is better than no education, you know. Oh, you're totally right. I agree with you. I just, uh, I'm jaded. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not anti-education either, and I, I would like us to have more. It's just I, I don't think it's a, a cure-all either. But I'm not getting into the enforcement thing again this week. Once every once in a while is plenty. <laughs> yeah, we, we do this every week. It really is. But as many as there are those who will ignore it, there are those who will see it when they look up how to do it. And that's what's, you know, important. Not as many as you think. I just feel like if Second Life goes back to doing those video tutorials like they used to do with Torley, it'll help a whole lot more than it'll hurt. I agree. I agree. Yeah, hire somebody who will do it. But it will help reduce it, you know? Treatment is better. A cure is what we need, but treatment is also better. If it's able to work, yeah. But we also need a grand change in the mentality that high poly doesn't equal up to high quality. Thank you. Kind of pushing like hey how about we do focus on um creators who do optimize and show like a, a low prim festival or low poly festival that low stuff can look good too kind of change the attitude of things because you know it kind of sucks when you got some people who only promote the highest um triangle very dense heads and clothes and saying this is the second life standard and then you got other ones like oh so that's how everybody does it i want to do it too and it's like uh no 
That's wrong. Two levels of subdivision on everything. It's tough, but like I said, we can't, we're not going to chip at it um, all at once, but just being able to hit it is enough. Just, you know, effort. Yeah, and the, the, I mean, the upside of that is that a lot of, um, a lot of games really don't allow you to zoom in as close as I said does, which... People will say, well, that's why we need all those, all those triangles. Yeah, but your 30k lips is dragging the sim down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, official advice would be great. I mean... I'm just a third party teacher, so everybody looks like, oh, well, that's just beginner stuff. Advanced things. That's what we want. So, yeah, help out with the fight. That'd be great. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, Jamel. Yeah, I'm sure that the. Uh, one of the docs are like either still or missing. I mean, what they suggested would solve a lot of um, um, minor problems, and that would add up over time, so... Maybe you guys should hire somebody to actually tackle education. Like that one over there. Not only new user tutorials, like new creator tutorials since, you know, Second Life encourages that, like official new creator tutorials. Okay, this is this is the program you probably want to use. This is how to make an LOD. Actually, walk you through the process. That it wouldn't be immediate, but I imagine the effects of that would be would appreciate over time. And yeah, you can teach people how to do that. That's a great idea. Really. Yes, yes, it, there's a person on top of that horse, but their voice thing is in their butt. <laughs> you don't even need a Linden University. You could have, you could probably literally put one person on it. Have her do something useful. <laughs> she. I reckon we got totally different aspects of what's useful. Don't see how. No, no, I'm sorry. That's just me. Oh, the building brewery can kick bricks. Ugh. Yeah, but those resources really aren't um, uh, uh. front and center, I guess. Like, it would... It, you know, I like I became a content creator before I knew about any of that. So, yes, YouTube tutorials make the best impact. But builders brewing. YouTube, YouTube is definitely like far more advanced. Plus, like you know, mesh artists who, who 
don't create for SL are going to see these tutorials and be like, wait, I can make money here? And a lot of mesh artists like do that kind of stuff on the side. Don't get me started on a brewery. I hate that shit. Snobby ass teachers who do things on a schedule. Just put the resources out there. And that will in turn attract more people who know what they're doing. And over time would it, um, I guess, uh, less uh, DDoSing of the Sims whenever somebody in a legacy body in a cat would have like me enters a server. why we need education about it. Preferably video. More people can follow along with that than they do with text. Text is indeed searchable, but trust me when I say that people will still ask for a video. <laughs> Ex So you got to do both, as I have painstakingly learned. Yeah, it's a job. But some of us do it out of the kindness of our heart. In spite. Mostly spite. But still... True, but unfortunately, a lot of creators don't want to share that secret. You know, got to keep it under wraps so they can keep that money flowing. No point. In and then they complain here. Like, hey, people should make things more optimized. All right, then teach to us. Well, if I do, then that means I lose money. It sure did get quiet, though. We have 15 minutes left, and all the Lindens. I'm just thinking about how happy I am that, like, we do actually have like a teaching community where. Our I'm from, but that's such a small niche part of that, so. Like, I don't have, I don't have to deal with, deal with this on a wider level, because, like, we educate each other regularly, but that's something, implementing, implementing something like that would be, like, that's wi more widely available would just be awesome. Doesn't Second Life have that machinima team that's always making movies for them? Can't they make one of those cheesy PSA kind of 50 styles, your mesh is killing us kind of thing? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> that would be great. Oh my god, that would be you know, amazing. I'm not sure if we have a 50s PSA team, but that could be awesome. <laughs> It's not hard to make a, a, a machinima, is that how you pronounce it? I'm sorry. I'm oh, I, I, I never knew. I've been butchering it for years. So I, <laughs> I lead in and then stumble. Machinima. You know, the machinima movies. It's not, it's not like that where I'm from. We're always bothering each other for tips. Oh, hang on. It's a continuum of the light point question. No one can change any lighting colors in 
builds bad for sci-fi creators. Uh, yeah, I don't have any other details on it. Tell me, do you know anything about this one? No, I haven't. Haven't heard it's that one. So flagged as a as a like deep two issue. Um, Let's take a look at the jerk in here. Which is uh, just kind of a holding bucket for stuff that isn't uh, in, a, in a current uh, dirt viewer. This is with the color picker. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen a variation of this back when we were doing some fishing. Uh, yeah, it's probably an sRGB to what your conversion thing that probably got overlooked. Stuff looks very faint. Sounds like one of those sRGB things. Yeah, we've had yeah, it's, those. yeah, we got a few of those still, and I think yeah, the color picker was. I think one of the last spots that we hadn't actually uh, fleshed out out of the system when we were doing wrapping up apes. So I'm not surprised this is still around. But we got, I see there's a script here, so we'll, yeah, if we can repro this, then we can take a look at this then. And maybe we can talk a little bit about this where should go on, maybe under six or not. But next triage then. Okay, so the, the uh, Jira that Polysale link looks like it's a bug report rather than a new feature. Um, so I think that's, that's probably getting looked at through QA. Looks like that one's still, uh, still waiting for eyeballs. It's flagged as waiting review. Under the lighting? Yeah. Oh, I kind of see it. Does not choose nearest lights. Yeah. The repro wasn't quite as straightforward as. Um, as it looked in the book, so I am still uh, working on that when I have some free time, but I've been pretty busy this week. The free time's been a little scarce these days. But I agree there is, it does look like there's a bug there, so just need to look at it. All right, well, I think we've uh, probably covered most of the usual topics. Um, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to wrap it up for the week because I am going on vacation. I'm going to run off and do things that aren't Second Life related for a while. Uh, I think third party viewer meeting tomorrow is canceled. Uh, yeah, third party viewer meeting is canceled. I sent out a, uh, an email to the TPV announce list about that. So, uh, sorry, you can file for a refund for the 10 minutes you didn't get. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Take Talk care. Later. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> yeah, there was that mention of the mirrors. You beat the wind in zero, so let's <laughs> see about that. Bye. Oh, they left, so I didn't ask them. Uh, we got another yeah. question, though, since there's some Lindens left. Any word on the beta grid is still being stupid. Uh, that's outside my department, so no, I can't come on to that, unfortunately. Uh, SRGB2 linear, at least. Yeah, that's probably the. The solution that needs to happen. 
where exactly that is it's part of the process of tracking that bug down. Well, there you go, Shug. So uh, you're not the only person who was thinking she was talking out of her butt. I thought she left. Oh, so it's Firestorm that has actually had the mirror code. Cool. Server group is where you want to ask that. Last reply I got, it's more complicated than you think. And that was the only information that they're willing to give on the beta grid status. Okie doke. I forward that along. Tutorial idea is definitely a good idea. Should be considered. I know, right? It would totally ease the burden off of us third-party tutorial alerts. Yeah, if it were official the second one. Just dreaming about the relief of that stress. That'd be pretty. Oh, I can't talk. I'm going on vacation too. Today is actually my first day of vacation time. Yeah, bye. Oh, I can't. It's so much fun. Plus, you know, I kind of sort of owe it to the people who can't come here. I've been posting a live stream for this thingamajig meeting for a while, so people kind of get used to waiting for me to start it. So I can't be like, nope, no meeting, y'all. I'm on vacay. Go there yourself. More creators should come. I've been trying to drag some of my creator friends over. I don't have them of these success. Anyone can come. Any kind of creator. Bring scripters. All of them should come. All of, like, I feel like the more voices that are heard, particularly if they're knowledgeable ones, like, you know, the better things will be for everybody. Totes. Yeah, Paul, let's have take a quick look at that uh, alpha light bug. And unfortunately, yeah, deferred rendering doesn't really help with alpha objects. So I think there's a hard call limit uh, six point lights or something like that. Which is probably why you're running into that bug. Uh, one of the things we've been sort of on informally talking about is forward plus, which would. Uh, Maybe address this, but that's still down the road. Yeah, it's, I believe it's hard coder, yeah, it's like six light spacing. I think it's like probably the either the six closest or whatever there's some, whatever the algorithm determines. Uh, I'm not familiar offhand how it does that, but uh, yeah, it's hard limit. Because back in the day, there used to be uh, eight hardware lights supported by OpenGL, and I think two are reserved, <laughs> one for the sun and moon or something like that, and there's six are the point lights. Uh, we pro I think there's... Uh, an array set up where we have just eight lights. Oh. I think there's an algorithm which actually determines fills those six lights in, so probably doesn't make too much sense in the day of shaders. So it probably is a bug that we probably need to take a look at. Hey Vortec 
It seems you have started a project with the Lindens. Now they're looking into something. Yeah, it involved probably uh, running insight and probably. No, Dan, don't go. What exactly it's doing? Thank you for asking a question. Who knows? You have probably just fixed something that they were like, oh, yeah, that. Issue one thing we've noticed were the stats aren't always accurate. Uh, but not sure if you're referring to the clouds or mm -hmm. an issue. Oops, sorry, I forgot. You bring in chips again. <laughs> I wish I had chips. I want chips real bad. I think I might like cheat and just eat some cereal in a minute. But I gotta check my sugar because it's been low as of late. Chili, right? <laughs> I wish it was chili. It's been a roaring inferno here. Birds exploding in the sky. <laughs> Although that's not an exaggeration. For some reason, there's a lot of birds dying around here as of late. All on the East Coast. You just find patches of dead birds there. So it's kind of weird. But yeah, guys, if you are watching and you heard it, um, I forgot what I'm going to say. I'm, this is the first day of my vacation. So I'm going to be doing a bunch of projects and stuff that I want to do instead of helping everybody. I know just saying that makes me feel like super selfish, but, um, there's a number of things that I wanted to try to do that I can't do if I'm sitting here waiting for somebody to ask for help. So I'm going to try to work on a store so I can stop begging for donations so much and we can um, do more stuff, upload more things with, you know, my money instead of donation money. Of course, donations are always <laughs> rude. I'm sorry. Donations are always welcome and I do appreciate them. I just feel bad begging for money. So I want to go out here and try to take this month to generate some kind of income so money isn't an issue and I can do more for y'all you know buy some more programs and import more freebies and stuff like that without having to be like come on guys can I borrow some money I'll pay you back <laughs> so I'm sorry in advance it may seem like I'm ignoring you and I kind of am but I'm ignoring you for a good cause
Yeah, potentially could be a false positive. And we're going to get the whole avatar complexity bottle of wax. Yeah, yeah, we definitely... It's a spot, like many discussions about how to have better statistics on... Actually, specifically more accurate statistics of so what people are seeing as performs in a nice way. And yes, they'll have nice quality. So, yeah. If we were to have an arc to carry two of every furry, how big would that arc have to be? There's so many types of furs. And can we leave the Mobians out or do we have to add them in? Do they count as animals or is that people? <laughs> like we do not. Yeah. One of the problems is that all statistics are just based on some arbitrary calculation, which is based on triangles, which really isn't an accurate uh, measure anymore by any stretch of the means. So. Ideally, having some sort of draw calls would be a lot more accurate, but getting that propagated up is, is probably a separate job. <laughs> supposed to be, yeah. <laughs> Anybody saying anything in there? Nope. Okay. Hmm. I had a cell phone. Where is Well, Joe, it's actually both. So right now, until we do actually migrate to Vulcan, we do have to focus on draw calls. But but y'all, ultimately, you are right though. At some point, they'll, it will become irrelevant, and we'll have to then choose yet again another yet another metric for that. So it's actually kind of both. Uplift took a bit of a higher priority. <laughs> and thankfully, it was actually separate from the rendering, so it really didn't impact us since we were just focused on strictly the viewer side. I'm going to head out. Everyone have a safe uh, July 4th here for some states. Enjoy the weekend. Watch out for fireworks. Don't hold them and light them at the same time. Extra cosmos fireworks, that's for sure. <laughs> And that's it for the meeting then. I feel like I want to quote the Simpsons where he's like nothing says the American patriotism like blowing up a small portion of it. <laughs> Thank you.
See it, Kathy. You know, I always had a thing about those explosion demos they keep doing. They always use mannequins, never anything that's built like a human. Like, maybe fill the mannequins with ballistics gel or something. That's all I'm asking. When you see the plaster blow up, you're like, oh, well, yeah, it's plaster. <laughs> Yeah, Mythbusters, like, own all of the ballistics gel on this side of the world. Or go organic and use pigs. Oh, that seems kind of cute when you think about it. Pigs with fireworks in their little hands and then exploding them. Adorable. <laughs> well, they're dead. We... <laughs> It's true, but pigs have the same, well, almost the same compounds as humans. Ah, I reckon that's it then. The last Linden has left. Yeah. Alright, everybody. <sighs> I don't know. He got up and ran when I sat next to him, so I guess I made him uncomfortable. A little too sexy. Gonna have to tone it back. Would never do anything so bold as a bug we all love dan but if i was to go that far i would just be too embarrassed i know but i try to give him space when he's there to make a whole bunch of sexy cat outfits. The blatant cats have been nude for too long. Yep. This hair outfit ain't just for looking. It's there for profit. Oh, wow. How lucky. Both. Something stopping it. <laughs> ah, gotcha.
Yeah, that was the problem I had when, um... Wow. He still comes around. Well, I reckon it's his baby. Even if he's gone, he still want to come and see her. Shucks, I got a scoot. Let's get this project on the roll. It's already five o'clock and you know, four hours. Up. Oh, shoot! I thought that was thunder. I'm like, no, I haven't been to the watermelon joint in a long time. Is it still around? Uh, not at the moment. It's not. I was hoping to go visit it on my vacation. Damn, well, that's one thing to check off the list. Oh, boo. I made a whole avatar dedicated to going there. The watermelon time. Well, looks like that's off the list today. I didn't know he was married. Now I can't fangirl over him. Oh yeah, I'm still keeping y'all streaming here like it's something to do. <laughs> I guess I'll see y'all in the next stream. When, um, I don't know. Something. So I'll see y'all later. Thanks for watching the creators meeting. See y'all at the next meeting. Hopefully I'm awake. Read. Bye, everyone. Remember, I'm on vacation.